What's up guys, Claudio here checking in from the America server and in this video we're gonna be uh, looking at the changes for Chase, the second hero to have received the balance adjustment in the second patch of February. Let's see what all was changed for him. Now um, a lot of you have also asked for an update about the Roy changes, that one will be coming next, it's just I have to read through, through them and like get to understand exactly what changed for him. So that's coming, it just takes a bit more time. Also, before we get started, um, here's a shout out to both Manny and Wei team, the two resident uh, chase mains that I know. Uh, their input and information has been really greatly appreciated and really valuable in making this video. But okay, without further ado, let's just get to this. And again, thanks to both of you guys who helped me with making this. Now let's see Chase, so what has changed for him? First and foremost, they, well, you could sum it up like um, a change in quality of life and getting some nice uh, non-hero damage added to him. Let's see what exactly this means. First and foremost, his remove limit, his uh, signature skill was changed, so now it drains less HP and gives... Um, it gives the same amount of crit damage, but gives a little bit more attack speed. So this was this stay, uh, this is reduced from 2.5 percent per second, which also stacked up over time. The crit damage stayed the same, and the attack speed was increased to 500. Now, as I am being told, this crit damage actually stacks up about fi uh, 250 percent or at the maximum stack, which you can see because Vespa doesn't give you icons for that, it's so nice of them. And uh, that's similar to the speed and the HP uh, consumption. Now what this means that um, I have tested him a bit and it might make it possible for him to actually roll with the uh, when, with the TM lines that when you have above 95% health you gain the extra damage. Um, this is a might. When I was running on, on the test dummies and stuff I could see his health staying above uh, almost almost 100% all the time but he, he did drop fairly low at, at some point so it's, it's like an on and off kind of thing but definitely better than it was before. Also interesting change is that uh, there was no, as I believe there was no mention of the normal attack uh, tags before, at least it is mentioned in, in in the blue post now, so now I'm not quite sure if this was added now or later or, or it was there before, but this also makes a case for him to, to use perhaps the normal attack increasing TM lines as those might work better for him, especially as due to the changes in unique treasures, he no longer will be running unique treasure 2 in most cases, in most PvE cases, but will be running his unique treasure 4, which means that our auto attacks will be a larger part of his damage. But let's move on, let's see what else has changed. Um, his S3 was changed, so now it does... Um, what did they change about it? So they changed that the, the stun of this is 5 seconds now baseline, except for of uh, coming from from one of his perks, I believe that was increasing it to 5, so now this is baked into the skill and he receives a bit more healing from it. So originally it only did like a percentage of the damage, now it also heals a percentage of his maximum health. So uh, that's kind of nice, not a terribly big change, but it's like a quality of life increase for him. And then of course one of the other nice changes for him is his S4, remember this in health. Uh, <clears throat> so increases his max health by 20%, crit chance by 100, but this is also increased uh, four times or three times, so all the way up to uh, 250 CC, ACC, and ACC. And whenever his HP drops, he is increasing crit damage and attack speed. And of course, he resurrects when he takes fatal damage. And this is one of the new things that he, he used to need his unique treasure for this part to gain uh, CC immunity. He no longer needs a unique treasure for this. This has been baked into the skill itself. So now, when he resurrects as zombie chase, he is immune to CC all the time, which is quite nice. I have been killed by zombie chases before, and that's quite annoying. So, and now he's like always CC immune even during that state. So, yeah. That's quite, um, yeah, it's a nice change for him. All in all, these are just number changes and um, and nothing really fancy. Let's see the transcendence perks because those have some really in interesting parts to them as well. Let's see what all changed. So I have reset my perks. Um, if you are building PvE, of course, you will be taking the tier 1 perks. 
And the new absolutely obligatory perk, I believe, is his tier 5 dark. Every second he gains 1% of non-hero damage, stacking up all the way to 60 times. So yes, guys, that's 60% non-hero damage. Uh, if you are using him in PV, it, this is like, it, it doesn't make sense to not pick this, so just pick this. There is no argument against it. The other perks are kind of um, hit and miss. Let's see, of course, his um, S2 perk, this one was the one change that normally or originally this would double the HP consumption but give him more speed and crit damage. Instead now this is... Uh, giving him a stacking or a, a stacking buff it seems but again you do not get any any markers for this so you can't quite know how exactly how much but it increases his heal rate and reduces all damage taken now whether you need this or not is a question of what you are running for instance in eclipse where he needs the extra healing rate and probably the uh, the damage taken reduction is quite nice because he is still a frontline hero he will be taking all the stuff that frontliners take so even with phrase shields he might be taking too much damage I think in, in those kind of situations this will be a nice perk. I mainly run him in Eclipse, so I'm gonna pick this one up. Um, but yeah, so this is one, one of the things that was changed. Um, the other thing that was changed is his S3 perk. Um, originally this was uh, to gain... The light perk was giving him immunity to CC while he was using this. Now this is changed, increasing the... the uh, the mana cost and the heal rate. So I'm not quite sure if there is a point to this. Maybe some PvP uses. Otherwise, I don't quite see where you would use this. Um, yeah, so kind of weird. The other one, this used to give him the extra one second uh, stun duration, but this is now baked into the skill, and instead it gives dispels negative effects from self. Again, considering that he's already CC immune for the most part when he's running S2, I'm not quite sure. Maybe if, if, if it's because it says negative effect, so it's not just CC but all other effects that he can dispel from himself, so it might be good. But uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure where exactly you would pick this because in both in PvE and PvP you tend to run with enough cleanser that uh, he will not be needing this. It could be a nice thing for PvP maybe sometimes, but um, in general I think this one is not terribly, terribly useful. And it seems they did not really change any of these perks. Um, so yeah, no change to that. And of course I said the big change is his tier 5 dark which is which is really giving him a hell lot of um, non-hero damage and that leaves you if you are running 80 perks or 80 points so no extra perks on him that leaves you with two perks that you might pick for PvE this might be good extra amp depending on if you have amp on your team or not but um, I would probably just throw a cheese gets a lot of crit chance, so he gets like 25% just from his um, uh, S4, and he gets 15% from from being a warrior, so that's 40% already. If you pick this perk, then you are at uh, 55 already, and then there are priest perks and stuff, so it's quite easy to hit 100%. If your gear allows it, then you may not even need to take this, but if you are like running TM, where lines are kite quite scarce then it could be a good perk so probably this one is good and that kind of leaves you with one perk extra you could pick any of the tier 2 perks or you can just go with for instance his uh, tier 5 light which will give him attack defense and HP so I think this is the build that I'm going to run with him in Eclipse because I think that's what will get him the furthest. Now speaking of Eclipse, from what I've heard, a very well built chases have been making it to like 57 or something like that, which is quite good. Not up there with the 60 plus uh, clears of some heroes, but maybe that is even achievable. His main issue is still that he doesn't really have the kind of burst damage. His damage is more more of constant DPS, similar to Theo. Um, so yeah, we'll see if he can clear bosses fast enough in Eclipse. But I think um, it, the changes definitely help him a lot. I was running him with the wrong perks and the wrong UTs, and he went like 67 stages higher with a, uh, uh, a quite a bad composition with like uh, leftover gears and stuff. So I think the changes they really do help him a lot 
And yeah, we have left, left the other change left uh, for the last part here, the unique treasure. It seems that Vespa has a thing that they want to change everyone's unique treasures with these balance patches now, which is quite sneaky of them because it kind of forces you to spend more unless you already had a 25 uh, star hero. But let's see, so this, this is his unique treasure now, increases damage dealt to non-hero targets by 10% and re reduces damage taken by 20%. That's quite nice, both the extra damage and the uh, reduced damage taken part, and this goes up all the way to 25% non-hero damage. So combined with the 60% he gets from uh, from his tier 5 dark, that means 85% non-hero damage. And I am being told that the zero star unique treasure of this, so the UT4, is actually better than the old UT2 at 5 stars. So uh, this one which was increasing, uh, which was giving him like an AOE damage aura kind of thing based on his attack and um, well for pvp you would <clears throat> sorry my voice again so for pvp you would probably take this one still but i think for pve you will definitely want to be having this one and try and get it as high as you want as you can the no uh, damage taken reduction doesn't go higher but the non-hero damage is quite nice so all in all if you get his unique treasure 85 percent extra non-hero damage which of course scales really well once once you get into TM stuff. So yeah, Chase has this, received a nice quality of life buff, uh, loses less health, takes less damage, um, should have an easier time maintaining his, his S2. It's just that his kit is still really focused on this constant DPS instead of being bursty like the really good scoring heroes. So because of that and for being a melee, he will probably not be the king of scoring content or stuff that you need to kill really, really fast. But if you need a steady, um, steady good DPS, then he will be probably performing quite well. And I think um, getting to the 50s in Eclipse is already pretty good. If you have a bunch of teams that can do that, that will really give you a lot of eaters. So that's my take on him. Um, he didn't become a PvP king more than he was before, although he's still very strong, strong in PvP. He has good uses in PvE, but will probably not be the king of any kind of, um, of scoring contest. Uh, content and or contest even if you want to say it so and he should have an easier time in his own um, trials as well thanks to the fact that he's losing less health now and taking less damage and of course gets a very nice buff to non-hero damage so that's my take on chase let me know in the comments what you guys think are you are you happy with the cha uh, changes for him or do you think that he should have been buffed more let me know in the comments below. And this has been Claudio for now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.